It's literally the fear of almost every church is the active killer situation. And today, boy, we're going to see a response that leaves some stuff to be desired. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here on active self-protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from, you know, when I pause, it means it's Houston, Houston, Texas. LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. This woman shows up at this, this is a humongous church, Lakewood Church in Houston, with her seven-year-old in tow. She's not part of the congregation. She showed up just before the Spanish language service on Sunday afternoon. And you're gonna see here, I've, I've sped it up just for the sake of time. They go inside, leave their car, kind of with the flashers on and double parked, go through the foyer, where she pulls out of her bag an AR pattern rifle. She also has a pistol in the bag. Again, I've sped this up just for the sake of time. People are getting ready for the Spanish language service. This is a humongous church, 40,000 something people. And she is gonna come out from there. You're not gonna be able to see her initially, but you're gonna see people respond when she chambers her firearm and starts shooting. They start running. We have a uniformed Houston PD officer there who is going to initially confront her. You're gonna see him looking around and kind of see her there. And, and exchange, I think exchange a shot with her and he ducks inside. We have his badge cam later. You're gonna see what happened to him when he ducked into a hallway there. It's not pretty. Now, other folks are gonna run off and try to get to cover. You're gonna see our perp here is then going to come back around. That's her at the very top there. Now, um, I, I'm leaving this play on single speed. And quite frankly, it's gonna take a lot longer than any of us would hope in this kind of situation. Now, thankfully, everyone is bugged out of the area, but she puts her bag down that when we go listen to the badge cams, you're gonna hear her screaming at officers that she has a bomb in that bag. She's gonna pull her rifle, and then the rifle looked like it was either out of ammunition or uh, she had some kind of a malfunction in it at some point, so she's trying to clear that. While there are other officers who are gonna flow her way and try to engage her from fairly significant distance. And if you're paying close attention, you're gonna see a couple of times here that you're gonna have right there, for instance, a bullet go and hit the wall behind her. So they're not able to get any shots on her while she's just sitting there and trying to fix the malfunction in her gun. They did have some exchange of gunfire. It's kind of unclear as to whether that gunfire was from the pistol that she had with her or from the rifle. I think from the pistol though, because the rifle I think is out of commission at this point. And as you can tell, we've already gone over a minute here. She's gonna wander around a little bit. Now you can just barely see here, the little boy that she brought with her, her seven-year-old son, has been hit in the head. I went and looked at all the news stories that I could and, and they didn't say who hit her, who hit the little boy rather, uh, if that was her, her bullets who hit him or if it was the officer's bullets who hit him. I don't know, uh, he was hit in the head, he's in critical condition, had to have a lobotomy in order to save his life, all kinds of those other things. Well, finally, they're gonna get a bullet in her, okay? And put one in her and put her down. And she's screaming the whole time. You'll hear this on the badge cams, you know, oh, I stop, I need help and, and those kinds of things. <clears throat> and and uh, but thankfully officers kind of see what's going on with her here. There are some officers coming from the other side as well, and so there there's a big response. I mean, this is Lakewood Church has a large um, you know congregation, and so they have multiple uniformed cops, also some off-duty Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission officers who are off-duty and working as church security who I think are part of the congregation. And those guys are in suits, not in uniforms. So you're gonna see her finally, they're gonna get enough bullets in her for her to go down two minutes and 15 seconds after she shows up. There's the TABC officer that you see finally seeing her. And you're gonna see him here. This is the officer who actually engages her, who is in a suit because he's working as a church security officer, a member of the congregation who happens to be a peace officer in Texas with the Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission, not a uniformed Houston PD officer. There are several of those as well but you're gonna see him kind of sneak over and go through an entire magazine and then get a second magazine in the gun and then go to work from there, again, having a hard time with hits. We have multiple badge cams. I want you to see what happens here. It's a lot. Let's listen in. I 
लेकिन नहीं भाई
What the fuck? Alright, she's coming. She's up, she's up, she's up. She may have a bomb. You need to call us, 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 Hey, who, who has that radio? You guys are ready? Yes, we already got we need, it. We need, we need a bomb squad. Clear units, keep the channel health one. Now we're to a day of the description. No, ma'am. I don't know. Yeah. She may have a bomb. She, she needs to call us. You gotta call us. 42 item 2A is gonna be a female. She's down right now. We need a medic. We need a medic. We have a, a kid. Our perp did end up dying at the scene. She took the foyer temperature challenge. We have a rule of active self-protection. I will never mention the name of a perpetrator of mass violence like this. We call that the some asshole rule at active self-protection. The little boy is, is still in serious condition. Again, had a, a lobotomy. We don't know which bullets happened. I don't know that they recovered one from his head, may never know who did that or they haven't released that at the very least. She did also shoot one congregant in the leg with her 223, he received a fairly serious wound, but uh, was released from the hospital several days later. No officers were harmed in this particular one, and thankfully they did put her down. There was some mention on some media sites that there was some issues of maybe that this shooter was like transgender, or where there's some LGBT issues or hate or any of those things. Those proved to be unfounded. Just, I, I heard several of those when this first started going. It's not the case. This woman was a cisgender, heterosexual female who had apparently an, an, um, a, a state, fake name as a male, had impersonated a male at some point, but that's a very different thing. Uh, so let's keep those out of there. We have a bunch of lessons on this one. And also because we wanted to do an extended discussion on this one, Mike and me and Neil tonight, uh, the day that this one posts on YouTube, uh, we are going to do that in the Active Self-Protection Unlimited app. So if you're an ASP Unlimited subscriber, please join us tonight for an extended discussion on some of the challenges with this one. Okay, we're not gonna talk about any of the theological stuff with Lakewood Church, with Joel Osteen. None of that stuff matters here. But that response... Oh boy. Yeah, I'm not sure what their plan was. I'd love to see their action plan for an active shooter, but I don't think if they had one, this was definitely not it. At least I hope it wasn't it. Boy, Mike, even before our extended discussion on the app, I have a lot of thoughts here. And I think the first thing that we see is these attacks on churches in particular, uh, very commonly, or, or on other public venues, start either in the parking lot or in the foyer rather than kind of in the main space. And that's where we need to focus our attention, I think. Yeah, you need someone out there, um, preferably with a radio, with comms, with other people who are on the security team for your church uh, to be able to intercept that problem. But really, preferably outside of multiple entrances, that can be hard if it's a big church like Lakewood is a huge church. It's a coliseum. Um, but I also want to point out one thing. I think as law enforcement officers, as security professionals, as self-defenders, we kind of have this idea in our head of what our quote unquote bad guy is going to look like. 
And I don't think most people practice, okay, there's a, there's a mom with a little kid in her arm that's going to come here and do this. So I think the, the, one of the big lessons here is it's not going to always look like you think it's going to look like. So keep your eyes peeled and be aware. If you're on the security team, it's your job to be present in the moment. It's your job to be observant and to catch the stuff, uh, hopefully before it starts. That's the whole purpose of having someone out there. Yeah, and I think here, there's a big part of that, that cognitive load of, wait a minute, this is a woman and she's got a gun and what am I gonna do? Remember, the threat can come from, from you know men and women both, it can come from young and old both, can be people that you don't expect. Uh, and so it's behavior cues that we look at, not other cues, it's behavior cues. Now, secondarily, and this is a big deal, right? We already saw Officer Marino and what happened uh, later and, and, and that's, we'll, we'll get to there in a minute. But here, he has a shot on this woman at, my guess is here, somewhere in the seven to 10 yard range, probably even less than seven maybe. And, and if he's able to put her down, this whole thing is over, okay? I don't know if her little boy gets hit at this, you know, if he gets her here, it doesn't look like he would. And I don't know if the other bystander gets shot, but you have a chance and your first shot is your best shot. And that this is why in this moment, we say that our, our beginning marksmanship skills are so important because I have to, if I put that shot into that perp early, I may not have this whole giant problem where more people die. This is gonna be a recurring theme in this video, so buckle up. Our motto at Active Self Protection is attitude, skills, plan. All right, they had a plan, obviously, the church has a security plan, right? I don't know if they followed it or not, I have no idea. But attitude and skills are gonna come into play more than once here. The attitude has to be, yeah, I might get shot. Yeah, I might get killed, but there is someone out there threatening human lives. I have to go out there and overcome my fear. Courage needs to be part of your attitude. The other the other leg of that table is skills. It's a two-legged table, Never mind. Skills, right? You've gotta have the marksmanship. You've gotta have the ability to put rounds on target. I have no idea what happened here in this freeze grab. I don't know if his gun malfunctioned or, or he had a problem or a hang up or a safety was, wasn't deactivated. I have no clue. But this this was the best opportunity they had at any point during this to, to shut this down before it really got kicked off. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, he didn't make that shot. And, and listen, this is a uniformed Houston PD officer, okay? And uh, what we always say in church safety, so, so when I teach church safety, the purpose of a uniformed uh, police officer is really not their gun because quite frankly, the uniformed police officers in this particular instance were pretty pathetic with their firearms. It's their radio. Uh, and their radio is not for an active killer incident. Their radio is for a medical emergency or a missing child or communication with other people on other sides of the building, okay? Because listen, this is, is not an acceptable level, quite frankly. Going and hiding is a big issue. Now, the other part of this one here is, is if you're gonna be in church security, the number one thing in this particular one, and everybody wants to talk about this problem in church security, right? They wanna talk about, well, what, what happens when we have an active killer? It's a very simple problem. When you have an active killer, you have two missions. The first mission is to find him. And then the second mission is to kill him, in this case, her, right? is to, to put her down and, and she's screaming, I have a, a bomb, great, anchor shots approved, right? Like I'm gonna put a whole bunch in her until the twitching stops. But, but recognize you've gotta move to the problem and, and it's a simple problem to solve in church safety. Uh, there's a whole lot of other church safety problems that are much more complicated to solve. This one very simple, but the, it requires one prerequisite attitude and that attitude is courage. I have to be willing and ready to put myself between the bad person and my loved ones in my congregation and converge with the threat until I know I can get the hit and be brave enough to take those risks with myself until such time as I do. And all the time that got spent here exchanging missing shots at 25 is time that people could be dying. And I'm not trying to be overly critical here, but I'm saying if you're gonna protect a house of worship, if it's your friend, your family worshiping there, you have to have the courage to be the hunter and not the rabbit. And that's really the attitude I try to instill in new agents when I was still active in law enforcement. Uh, and it, it counts for everything. It counts for victims, it counts for witnesses, it counts for, for bad guys, and it counts for the people you're protecting. Uh, and that is that you treat them like you would want a family member treated. Um, in this case, you know, you're, you're gonna, if, if your kid or your mom or dad or your brother or sister, your wife, husband is, is the one in potentially being threatened, I promise you, you're gonna find that level of courage. You need to treat the people, the congregants in this congregation like they are your family members um, and protect them like you would a family member. And I think, um, again, the idea that you're going to hide it out or hope she doesn't shoot anybody, is just, it's a non-starter. You're a law enforcement officer. 
you signed up for this job for a reason. You need to get in there and handle this. And people will say, oh, John and Mike are just Monday morning quarterbacking again. You don't know what you would do. No, I do know what I would do because I was the first responder to an active shooter when I worked in Southern California. And I was terrified. I mean, I was absolutely terrified. My heart was racing. My adrenaline was through the roof. And all I kept thinking was every step I took towards this building that I was going to, I could take around. I could take around. And I had to force myself to move forward into that. But I did. Um, and this is something that as a police officer, you have to get this sorted out in your head way ahead of time. Am I willing to risk my life, literally risk my, my life and my safety to protect another person? If the answer is no or even I don't know, please go find another job. Yeah. And listen, this Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission uh, peace officer who's working for the church, right? Uh, he's working there as security. Kudos to him for being willing to engage. Marksmanship, challenge, right? You got to have the marksmanship skill, especially in a church this large of a significant amount. But at least he moved forward and engaged the threat. I, I, I don't want to get too hard on Officer Moreno here, okay? So I'm sure Officer Moreno is a fine human and I have no problem with that. But, but you got to have the courage to be the hunter here and not the rabbit. And, and to go, oh, I'm pinned down. You're only pinned down if, if they have a position of advantage and they are better with their gun than you are. But of course, if you know you're not good enough to solve the problem, if you know you're barely up to qualification standards, then you're gonna hide like this. You're going to say, oh, wait a minute, I, I think I'm gonna lose to this other person. That gun has no sights on it. She's never fired it before. I've gotta know that my skill level is up to this and have the righteous indignation that says, you're not gonna beat me today. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I really don't have a whole lot to add to that. Um, I think we should talk about the marksmanship piece for sure. As John just mentioned, look, if you're if you're not up to snuff with any of your firearms or any of your equipment for that matter, you already know that, right? You As you're watching this video, you're like, yeah, I really should be getting to the range more. I really should be getting some outside training. I should be doing more than I'm doing. You know that already. So this is your wake up call. Don't you know, don't let this be you um, being talked about, uh, you know, on one of the biggest self-defense channels on YouTube. I don't want that to be me. I don't want to I don't want to fall in with that Uvalde crowd with that mindset of, well, officer safety is paramount. Um, I can't go out there. I might get shot. Those are attitudes we have to do away with. They have to be done away with yesterday. There's no more of that. Now, those those officers in Uvalde rightfully got excoriated by the public for their inability to either think for themselves and have the courage to move in when they should have moved in. Uh, and in this case, I, I just see a lot of officers who I think, John, you hit it on the head. I think they're not confident enough with their marksmanship to move out and try to get some effective shots on fire, with the exception of the Alcohol Beverage Commission or whatever that is, uh, control uh, agent or officer who had enough courage to get in there and try to engage, but for whatever reason, couldn't get the shots on target. Listen, if you're going to come out from cover, right, and you're going to try to stop a situation like this, hey, don't don't waste your shot on a, you know, on, on squeezing the trigger and spraying and praying. Get out there and do what you do. Stand tall and deliver rounds um, because you, you might as well. You're already out. Your cheese is already hanging out in the wind. You might as well do what you can to stop the threat. I like that Officer Garcia here at least tells herself, I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. She recognized what was going on here. Now, uh, Deputy Oriana here, this is with uh, the Sheriff's Office. Again, we've got multiple officers, a large congregation. You see, he's got the same problem, right? He's struggling to know where it's coming from. Now, in a big building like this, you might. You might struggle to know where the shots are coming from. But go towards the sound of what you think is the problem. And you are the one that's there to solve it. You have to be willing to do that. And again, I think there was a lot of failure of that. Now, the, the other thing here, final kind of bit, this little boy has been shot. And you've got to deal with the shock of, I've got a seven-year-old with a, with a bullet wound to the head. Solve the problem and then immediately switch to the first aid portion of your life and, and not just staging them, but, but rendering aid and doing what you can. Don't know what they would have done here. So, okay, eventually the TABC officer was able to put this threat down. I think this is one of those cases. She said she had a bomb. I would have absolutely anchor shot this problem. I would have shot this problem until she stopped twitching at any capacity because of that. And I'm not saying that to be a badass or whatever. I'm saying, if you hear that, that's that's a real threat and that switches your mode and your understanding of things, right? This is a shot across the bow for all of us who protect houses of worship. That, that this problem, which is very rare, happens maybe twice a year in churches in America out of 50 million worship services, but it is a straightforward problem that requires first and foremost courage. And then secondarily, a marksmanship challenge that is very significantly higher than I think most private citizens train for, for sure. 
and most police officers train for as well. Those are the two things that are required here to handle this problem, protect your congregation, and cover your ASP.